In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can incorporate vocals and acoustic instruments into your electronic music performance. So we're going to be working with the TC Helicon Voice Live Touch 2, which is a really great vocal processor. We've got an OB6 analog hardware synth, uh, a violin, and we're going to combine all these elements for a bit of an experiment and see what we end up with. <laughs> Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, great to meet you. My name is Kirsten and I'm an audiovisual artist under the name Naoki. I've also recently written the book Performing Electronic Music Live and I've started creating this tutorial video series to accompany the book. You can obviously also watch these videos if you haven't read the book, but if you're curious to find out more, please check out the link down below in the description. So today I thought we'd try something a little bit different. I've got a special guest here with me today. Uh, his name is Joel Smith and he's a brilliant classically trained singer. He's trained at Eton College here in the UK. He's performed in all sorts of prestigious venues including the Royal Albert Hall. Uh, so I'm really excited to have him here for this tutorial video. Uh, so together with Joel we are in a band called Ember. This has nothing to do with Naoki. This is kind of like another thing, another project that I'm really into at the moment. And um, we're trying to create kind of like a neoclassical electronic sound, which means that we're combining the classical voice of violin with electronic elements. So I thought I'd kind of feature that for this video uh, to give you an example of a setup that you can use to do this kind of thing. Hi, I'm Joe, and this is some music I'm gonna play with Kirsten, who's also in Ember. And we got the OB6. We've got lots of synths, but we're not going to play with any of the other synths. And did I say I'm Joe? I'm Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so there's going to be a full performance at the end of this video, so please make sure to stick around until the end. Uh, but first, I'm going to break down our setup for you guys so that you have an idea of what's going on. Um, and yeah, so let's jump right in. So I'm going to just briefly introduce each of the components, and then I'm going to dig a little bit deeper and give you a more detailed explanation as to what they do. So we're using two microphones. We're using this E840S Sennheiser dynamic microphone for the vocals. And we've got this DPA4099 for the violin. We are using this OB6 synthesizer, a TC Helicon Voice Life Touch 2 voice processor, and um, we're also using a hardware reverb, the Strymon Big Sky. And last but not least, we're using this Allen and Heath mixer. So in order to record what we're doing, everything is going into this Focusrite Claret 8 Pro <laughs> interface. And everything is filmed here in our home studio, uh, which you always see me doing the tutorials in. Uh, up there is the clip for my phone, so that I'm actually able to record it from two angles. And here is uh, the Lumix camera, so uh, those are the two camera angles that you're seeing in the video. So everything in this setup is entirely live, there's no laptop involved. So essentially this is another hardware-only setup, and you know um, I really love those. But of course in order to record it, it all goes into a Mac. So now I'm going to delve a little bit deeper and talk about the individual components. First of all, I am going to talk about the vocal mic. This is the Sennheiser E840S and it's a vocal microphone. It's pretty good. It's rough and rugged and it works really well for taking on the stage. Can handle, uh, you know, loud sound pressure levels and so on and sounds quite nice for what we're doing here. <laughs> and the output of this microphone goes into the input of the TC Helicon Voice Life Touch 2, just via like a normal XLR cable. Next up, I'm gonna talk about the violin mic. It's a DPA 4099 or 4099. I don't know what the best way is of saying this number, but basically it's a really brilliant microphone. It's a clip-on microphone and I love it. 
Um, so I'm playing an acoustic violin and uh, essentially all that you do is you just clip the microphone straight onto the violin. It's got a rubbery little clip basically so it doesn't damage the wood. It's especially made for string instruments. Um, it sounds great for violins, uh, violas, banjos, mandolins. And uh, one thing that I like about it, it's a super cardioid microphone, which means that it's really, really directional and it doesn't pick up much other than the violin. So it allows me to sort of mix the live music a little bit. Um, I don't get too much spillage from other sounds in the violin bike. Um, I don't know if you want to know about the violin. The violin itself is really old. It was made in Paris in the 19th century and I love it. The next thing I'm just going to talk about really briefly is our OB6. Uh, the OB6 is a beautiful sounding analog hardware synthesizer. It was actually sort of a once in a lifetime collaboration between Dave Smith and Tom Oberheim, both two quite influential designers in polysynth history and they've come together to make this uh, unique and very powerful synthesizer. So the thing that's cool about it is it's got true voltage controlled oscillators, so they're really analog sounding, two pole filters, but then it's also got some added effects uh, which makes it quite versatile. It's got even a step sequencer, an arpeggiator, and a bunch of other things. Um, so for this song, Joel's actually created a sound and he's used preset 7, which is his favorite preset, but he's tweaked it a little bit. He stripped it back a little, he's reduced the effects and the modulation. In particular, he stripped back the reverb because, um, as I've mentioned, we've got a separate hardware unit for the reverb. Uh, we've also got a, a new Profit Ref 2, which we've got recently. We've also got a Roland JDXA. Uh, there's a Mook Siren and a bunch of other things because we love hardware sims. <laughs> Next up, I'm going to talk about the TC Helicon Voice Life Touch 2 which in this case we're using for effects and harmony. It's really great, it's quite an empowering tool for singers. You can use it for guitars as well, but I love it especially for singing because it can mount to a mic stand and it means that the singer can actually control what they're doing live on stage. Uh, you know, you're as a singer not really entirely at the mercy of the sound guy anymore, but actually you've got some control over your own sound and I think that's uh, quite a nice thing. There's also a Voice Life 3, which is a floor pedal, but I've not tried that one yet. So in this case, the Voice Life helps tie the live vocals in with the electronic elements, and also it's there to add some complexity in the chorus. Here is the effects tab, and what you can see is you see an overview of the different effects that are available to you. So to turn effects on and off, you've got this touchpad. So for example, if I want to turn a delay on, I just press this button. What's really cool is uh, that actually um, you can arm this hit button in order to quickly turn off several effects on and off. In our case, um, it's only turning the harmony on and off, um, but it's still much easier to find this hit button quickly than trying to figure out which of these you're pressing if you're singing at the same time. So you've decided which kind of effects you want, uh, but maybe you want to tweak them a little bit. So the way that works is that you can press this edit button. Uh, alternatively, you can also just press one of these buttons for a long time and it will take you to the edit menu for that effect. Uh, you can also go through all the effects with these buttons. Um, so for example, here's the reverb menu and I can say, okay, I want the, the level of this reverb to be different from what it is. I want the decay time to be different. Each effect has a bunch of things you can control. So in the harmony setting, and this is the interesting thing, um, what we wanted to do is we wanted to give Joel some, some backing vocals in the chorus of the song, which are controlled by the OB6. So essentially he's playing notes on the OB6. And um, back here, I'm not gonna sort of climb behind the synth now, it's a little bit difficult, so you'll just have to believe me, but um, you see there's MIDI out, there's a MIDI cable that comes out of the back of the synth, and it goes into the MIDI in of the voice life. So you can see um, Joel can turn on the harmony in the chorus and then turn it off in the verses so we get a little bit of contrast. It's got hit plus and it's got uh, hit minus so you can sort of toggle, you can decide uh, exactly how you want the hit button to turn this on and off. Like for example if you want to toggle some effects, some turn on, some others turn off and the other way around that's how you can like 
use the plus and the minus to sort of toggle things quickly when you're playing live. We're working with humanized notes here, so there's also a load of other presets. Um, it just means that the notes are human sounding, so there's a little bit of modulation in the voice, it's not entirely flat. Obviously the MIDI notes that are coming in are completely flat, They're each note plays only one exact pitch throughout its duration, but a human when they're singing actually they have vibrato, they've got a bit of modulation, the voice is never completely flat. Uh, so you can decide to which extent you want it to sound a little bit more human or a little bit more, I guess, cybernetic. Okay, so uh, also in uh, this Voices tab you can see that there's a, a couple of additional settings, like if I was in Effects and, and in the Harmony tab I chose like a different sort of preset, uh, you know, um, then you will see something different in this Voices mode, like you can sort of actually adjust like what pitch each voice sings and the different and the level of each one you can turn them on and off so if you don't want to have midi notes coming in you also have the option to have sort of presets of what the other voices are going to sing if we go into setup uh, we've got a few other things that we can adjust i'm not going to go into too much detail but you can see it's been set up so that it can see the dynamic microphone that we've plugged in uh, importantly, MIDI control has to be on so that we can actually um, sort of control things with MIDI. Here we have some MIDI settings so you can see, you know, what channel it uh, receives the MIDI notes on, which can be useful if you're doing a lot of MIDI routing and there's a lot of things happening at the same time. Last but not least, here's a mix function. You can adjust, you know, how loud you want the effects to be and how loud you want the harmony to be and so on in sort of to in relation to the drive vocal if you're doing a lot of things with loops this is also a looper um, we are layering a lot of things on top of each other um, that mix menu can become a lot more important so the output of this voice life touch 2 goes straight into into the claret into the Foxrite uh, Claret 8 Pro and from there it can then get recorded in the computer. So this is the mixer, it's an Allen & Heath Z12 effects and the OB6 and the violin are routed from the mixer into the Strymon Big Sky reverb to create ambience and depth. You can see the violin microphone being plugged in here. You can't see the OB6 being plugged in just because it's going into the claret first and then out of the claret into here. It's just that our studio is already set up that way. Um, that's why you can't see the OB6 cables coming in here. Uh, but we could have just as well just plugged them in here. It would, wouldn't have made a difference. So you can see this is the violin mic. Um, it's a bit of gain on it. And then you can see you've got these two aux buses. So there's these two black cables um, which are hardwired to the two auxes and they go into the stereo inputs of the reverb and then the yellow cables are the stereo outputs and they go back into the mixer again and then we're routing the output of the mixer into the claret. So the Strymon Big Sky, uh, as Strymon put it themselves, it creates lush, glorious and radiant reverbs and we totally agree with that sentiment. So the Strymon sound is mixed in with the synthesizer sound and the violin sound. Uh, we've got, to be honest, more reverb than direct sound uh, because we love that lush, spacious feel. So this piece is all about reverb, it's all about space. So having this hardware reverb unit and its beautiful sound is a big aspect of what we're doing here. So you can use this as a foot pedal as well. You can kind of kick these buttons with your feet if you want to. Um, but it's a really beautiful sounding reverb. So it's got 12 unique reverb machines as you can see here and we are using Cloud. Uh, it's a really massive sound uh, which we love. Um, this is the mix button so you can, uh, you know, because we want to maintain a bit of dry sound. Uh, you can choose like how much dry to wet sound you want and you know you've got your typical parameters that you have on reverbs which is pre-delay, the time it takes before the reverb uh, sounds, the decay is the time the reverb takes until it stops sounding, roughly speaking. You've got a tone control, there are two parameters that depend on um, 
the preset here, so they're always different. Um, you know, some modulation. Um, you know, it's not too complicated, but it just sounds really beautiful and just like instantly opens up your sound and it gives it this whole other dimension. So overall, this setup kind of makes for a pensive, deep, ambient, organic sound. It's got some acoustic and some electronic timbres. And it's another hardware setup. Um, so, so yeah, that was the inspiration for this. Thank you so much for watching up to this point. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial part of this video. I hope you enjoyed kind of taking a look behind the scenes to see what we do with the technology. And as promised, next up, we've got a full performance. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like, leave a comment down below. Let me know um, what your setup looks like. I'm always really interested in it because people have so many different creative ways in which they use technology. So I'd love to find out more. Uh, so yeah. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe in the links below. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. Let me down. Let me down.
Thank you.